The file sizes shooting video now are absolutely insane. And if you're not using proxies to edit, you probably should be because it's gonna be a lot faster and a lot easier. When I'm editing, I want things to be instant. I don't want frame skipping and I don't wanna have to wait scrubbing through my timeline. So let's dive in and I'll give you the quick rundown of how my workflow goes with most projects. Making proxies should be on your list when you dump footage to your computer and make a folder and start a new project. So the first thing I do is I use post haste to set up a project file and it's a great free tool that you can download. And then let's just dive into Premiere. Okay, so you can make proxies importing from the media browser by just hitting this ingest button and setting up an ingest preset. But for today, I wanna look at making proxies from footage that's already imported. And before we begin, there's a few things I wanna show you. So this button here, is toggle proxies and you're gonna need that later. So to get that, just hit the button editor and you're looking for the toggle proxies and you can just drag that right onto the panel. The other thing that I like to have is right here and it's the proxy status and to get that, just right click, hit metadata display and type in proxy and then make sure this box is checked and it'll probably pop up all the way at the end, but you can drag it to the front like I did. All right, so now the Premiere project set up, let's make some proxies. So one thing to note right off the bat is Adobe will read the original frame rate that you shot the clip at. So these are labeled at 23,976. That's what it'll make the proxy as, as original source. Even if I change these 60 frame per second clips and interpret them into 23, it'll still make the proxy at 60. And I'll cover the fix for that in a minute. So it's literally this simple as like highlighting your folder and right clicking, going to proxy and then create proxies. Here, you're gonna have some different options depending on uh, what system you're on. For me, I'm on a Mac, so I got ProRes options and Cineform. Um, and the difference here is ProRes is still gonna be super snappy to edit with, but uh, the file sizes are a little bit bigger and the GoPro Cineform is a little bit smaller and still super quick to edit with. Um, and for me, I usually stay low or medium on uh, either one that I choose to go with. Today, let's go with medium. I always leave it next to the original media and that's pretty much it. All you have to do is hit OK and it'll fire up media encoder and it'll just rip through all of them. This is why I say that you should make this part of your process when you set up a project file. Because if you're going into an edit and wanting to edit, you're gonna have to wait a while. So go get a coffee, come back and pick it up from there. Okay, so check it out. As they're being rendered, you can see that in the status window, they say attached and the ones that are still rendering say offline. And then the way to switch it is toggle proxies. And you can see it moves like butter now. So the thing that gets tricky here is when you're working with files that are not the same as your time base. So what I mean by that is if I switch all these clips to 24. So if I toggle back and forth here, you can see that the time is changing within the clip. That's because the proxy is rendered at 60, the original frame rate, and I interpreted this at 24. So when you're making your proxies, you're gonna have to interpret your footage in Media Encoder. So the same thing that you do here in Premiere, you also have to do to the proxies. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but as Media Encoder is opening, you're gonna to have to kind of be diligent and sit and wait here. Wait through all the clips and you're just gonna hit the stop. Would you like to finish the current file before the queue stops? No, you're gonna reset that clip. And then I'm gonna Command A, select all the clips right click and interpret footage. And here's where you're gonna match up whatever frame rate you wanna do. It might take a little while depending on how many clips you have selected. So basically what I'm doing here is telling all these 60 frame proxy files I want at 24. And now all these 60 proxy files will be rendered out in 24 frames per second. So one thing to note here is the presets in the Premiere dialog box are gonna render out at 720. So a 16 by nine proxy, which you can see right here. So if you've shot something that isn't 16 by nine, then when it's making proxies, it's gonna show up in Premiere with black letterboxing. 
to avoid this, you can go over and make uh, your own encoding and ingesting preset and you can fix it so it's whatever aspect ratio that you please. Now that we've rendered our interpolated clips, all 60 down to 24, and you can see that they finally match up frame accurate here. So if I turn the proxies on, nothing moves and I can scrub freely. So you can see that it missed one here where it says offline and that's why I bring that metadata display up. And to fix that, all you have to do is just go to attach. All you have to do is find it. So that's why you have to be a little bit more diligent in stopping media encoder to make it. And I also probably made uh, a proxy file in 60 frames. So I'm just telling it which one to reference. And now it should be able to play back totally fine. Okay, so that's it. I hope that was a lot simpler than you thought it was. And now your timeline should scrub like butter. See you in the next one. Peace.